Ravana 
Dishatam kedam utvahan Astrogam vyadam advanair Astrogam vyadam advanair Ganani kam ivanila Ganani kam ivanila Danur vishpur jayan divyam Danur vishpur jayan divyam Dishatam kedam utvahan Dushatam ke damod bahar Astrogam vyadamad banar Astrogam vyadamad banar Yanani kam ivan ila Yanani kam ivan ila Danur vishpur jayan de 
the heads of those who were cut to pieces by the arrows of Dhruva Maharaj were decorated very beautifully with earrings and turbans. The legs of their bodies were as beautiful as golden palm trees. Their arms were decorated with golden bracelets and armlets, and on their heads there were very valuable helmets bedecked with gold. All these ornaments laying on the battlefield were very attractive and could bewilder the mind of a hero. A short purpur. It appears that in those days soldiers used to go to the battlefield highly decorated with golden ornaments and with helmets and turbans. And when they were dead, the booty was taken by the enemy party. Their falling dead in battle with their many golden ornaments, with their many golden ornamental dresses was certainly a lucrative opportunity for the heroes on the battlefield. I'll go ahead, text number 20. The remaining Yakshas, who somehow or other were not killed, had their limbs cut to pieces by the arrows of the great warrior Dhruva Maharaj. Thus they began to flee, just as elephants flee when defeated by a lion. Dhruva Maharaj, the, the best of human beings, observed that in that great battlefield, not one of the opposing soldiers was left standing with proper weapons. He then desired to see the city of Alakapuri, but he thought to himself, no one knows the plans of the mystic Yakshas. In the mountain, or oh, in the meantime, while Dhruva Maharaj, doubtful of his mystic enemies, was talking with his charioteer, they heard a tremendous sound as if the whole ocean were there and they found that from the sky a great dust storm was coming over them from all directions. Within a moment the whole sky was overcast with dense clouds and severe thundering was heard there was glittering electric lightning and severe rainfall. My dear faultless Vidura, in that rainfall there was blood, mucus, pus, stool, urine and marrow falling he heavily before Dhruva Maharaj and there were trunks of bodies falling from the sky. Next, a great mountain was visible in the sky, and from all directions, hailstones fell, along with lances, clubs, swords, iron bludgeons, and great pieces of stone. Dhruva Maharaj was Dhruva Maharaj also saw many big serpents with big angry eyes vomiting forth fire and coming to devour him along with groups of mad elephants, lions and tigers. Then, as if it were the time of the dissolution of the whole world, the fierce sea with foaming waves and great roaring sounds came forward before him. The demon yakshas, 
are by nature very hina, and by their demoniac power of illusion, they can create many strange phenomena to frighten one who is less intelligent. When the great sages heard that Dhruva Maharaj was overpowered by the illusory energy, by the illusory mystic tricks of the demons, they immediately assembled to offer him auspicious encouragement. As all the sages said, Dear Dhruva, O son of King Uttanapad, may the Supreme Personality of Godhead, known as Sharanga, Sharanga Dhamva, who relieves the de desires of his devotees, kill all your threatening enemies. The holy name of the Lord is as powerful as the Lord himself. Therefore, simply by chanting and by hearing the holy name of the Lord, many men can be fully protected from the fierce death without difficulty. Thus a devotee is saved. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The great rishis approached Dhruva Maharaj at a time when his mind was very perplexed due to the magical fears exhibited by the yakshas. A devotee is always protected by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. By his inspiration only, the sages come to encourage Dhruva Maharaj and assure him that there was no danger because he was a soul fully surrendered to the Supreme Lord. By the grace of the Lord, if a devotee at the time of death can simply chant his holy name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Simply by chanting this Maha Mantra, he immediately surpasses the great ocean of the material sky and enters the spiritual sky. He never has to come back for repetition of birth and death. Simply by chanting the holy name of the Lord, one can surpass the ocean of death. So Dhruva Maharaj was certainly able to surpass the illusory magical fears of the yakshas, which for the time being disturbed his mind. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the fourth canto, tenth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Dhruva Maharaj fights with the Yakshas. Panchakal Patarubhyas Jakri Pansindu Vaneva Chapati Tanam Pavani Vyo Vaishnya Vyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Ganadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhakta Vanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we're hearing how Dhruva Maharaj had a very challenging encounter with the Yakshas. The Yakshas have mystic powers and by their mystic powers they were able to bewilder the mind of even a great devotee like Dhruva Maharaj. Fortunately, Dhruva Maharaj had association from the great sages. The great sages are there to guide him and to remind him. Just like Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada points out in the purport about the importance of chanting the holy name. 
So when we are in danger, when we are in, trou in trouble, difficulties come on us, which are inevitable at some point in our life, we have to be able to take shelter of the Holy Name. We have to call out to Krishna. And of course Krishna comes in the form of His Holy Name. As we say, Kali Kale Nama Rupe Krishna Avatar. Lord Krishna descends in the Kali Yuga. Avatar meaning one who descends. So Lord Krishna comes to this world in the form of His Holy Name. We have to call out to Lord Krishna. And simply by calling out the Holy Name of Lord Krishna, then we can overcome all the Maya of the material world. Maya of the material world is always there, Krishna's Maya. And it is Duratyaya. It's very difficult to overcome. Right? Devi Isha Gunamai Mama Maya Duratyaya. Very difficult to overcome Maya. But, mameva ye prapajante my am itam tarantite. But simply by surrendering to Krishna, we can easily cross over these obstacles. Certainly hearing about the obstacles which were confronting Dhruva Maharaj is very bewildering. How the yakshas could perform so many mystic tricks so many things falling from the sky and then different wild ferocious animals appearing, great beasts, just to bewilder the mind of Dhruva Maharaj. So we see sometimes even great devotees, they can be put into bewildered, they can become a little perplexed or bewildered, but not for long because they're devotees that although they're confused and bewildered for some time, they can again situ situate themselves properly in Krishna consciousness by taking shelter of the Holy Name. We have to practice taking shelter of the Holy Name, however. If we are not accustomed to chant the Holy Name, then when we're in difficulty, then it will be difficult for us to chant. If we don't have the habit to go to Krishna and to take shelter of Krishna, then when the difficulties come, it will be hard for us to take shelter because we don't have the habit. We're not accustomed to thinking of Krishna. So it's important for us that we do sadhana bhakti, we're practicing sadhana bhakti, sadhana bhakti, devotional service in practice, right? And we do, we practice hearing and chanting, and then by hearing nicely, we chant nicely, and then when we do hearing and chanting properly, then naturally, then smaranam, or remembrance will also come. So one after another, the different nine angas of devotional service are there. We have to practice these different angas. That's why we have our morning program. We come to the temple in the morning, we have a program, we have Mango Arti, we worship Tosi Devi, we worship Srila Prabhupada, we hear Srimad Bhagavatam, we see the deities. All of these activities, are they the morning program encompasses the five angas of bhakti, which Rupa Goswami has stressed over all the items of bhakti. If you read the nectar of devotion, you will see in the nectar of devotion, there are 64 different items of devotional service. But from the 64 items, Rupa Goswami has brought out five of the items and explained that these item, five items are especially powerful. And if one has a little attraction for even one of these five, then one can get all perfection. So these five items, they begin with hearing uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, and then also Sankirtan, chanting the holy name, 
and then associating with the devotees and worshipping the deities and then also being in the holy place. So these five items, this is uh, all in our morning program. Every morning we have our program here in the temple. This is the holy place. And this is the place where the devotees all come. So this is certainly a holy place. There's been so many wonderful activities taking place here. So many devotees come regularly and chant the holy name. So certainly this is a tirtha. This is the holy place. And because the devotees are coming regularly, so there's always Sankirtan going on. The, the congregational chanting is going on every day, morning, evening, even sometimes during the day. But regularly it's going on. The, the deities are always here, they're being worshipped. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is being spoken regularly, every day we're going through the Srimad Bhagavatam. And we don't mind, even we finish the Srimad Bhagavatam, we'll begin again. We go back to the beginning and continue. So hearing and chanting, all these activities, they are eternal. Indeed the process is eternal. We describe this process as sanatana dharma, the eternal religion. Our activities are sanatana. We are worshipping Krishna here and when we leave the body, wherever we go, we'll go on to worship Krishna. We may go to the spiritual world even, even after liberation. Our activities continue. For the Mayavadis, the Mayavadis are thinking that after liberation, then there's only there's nothing. There's all uh, there's only the oneness. But for the devotee, we understand that after liberation, there is also devotional service. The devotional service is the means. And devotional service is the goal. To serve Krishna, service to Krishna goes on in the spiritual world. The devotees in the spiritual world are all engaged in service. And we're worshipping the deities here. We will go on to worship Krishna in the spiritual world. So our activities are all Sanatan. Our soul, of course, as spirit souls, we are also Sanatan, and our activities are also Sanatan. But because we are in ignorance, we are thinking that these activities are just related to the body. Because we are in illusion, because we are conditioned souls. We don't understand the actual nature of devotional service. We become confused, we become bewildered. In fact, we are eternally bewildered. We are described as being nitya bada, eternally conditioned souls. Eternally conditioned to the fact that we are the material body and that we are the servant of our senses. This is our conditioning. So this conditioning has been there for many, many, many lifetimes. Therefore, we are described as nityapada souls, eternally conditioned souls. But we can become liberated souls. It's not that we have to remain nityapada. We can be free from that illusion. And the process is simply by engaging in the sadhana bhakti, engaging in these regulated principles of hearing and chanting. Sadhana bhakti is performed on two levels. There's Vaidhi sadhana bhakti and Raga Nuga sadhana bhakti. So we are practicing Vaidhi sadhana bhakti. We are doing according to the rules and regulations. 
Raja Nuga says in the Bhakti is on the spontaneous platform where one will perform activities of devotion without even thinking, just like without even thinking about waking up in the morning or coming to Mangalati, the devotee will wake up and want to worship Krishna and want to chant the holy name. Prabhupada gives an example, he says, uh, in the beginning, to wake up early in the morning, we need alarm clock, we need our phone, most, we need the clock to wake us up. But after some time, we wake up automatically, naturally, with, even without the alarm clock, one will be awake and up. And so in the same way, Raganuga and Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti are like that. Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, we're following the rules. We're doing like this, do like that, do this, do that. Everything is according to the book. But Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti, one is spontaneous in his devotion to Krishna. One is naturally eager to want to serve Krishna, not just simply following some rule, regulation, just like we come to the temple and we offer our obeisances, oh, I have to do that, I have to bow, and the like. But when one is Raganuga Bhakti, then one will just do it spontaneously, without even thinking about it. One will want to be actively engaged in the service of Krishna. One will want to chant, and one will want to hear about Krishna. The natural desire will awaken. So that is Raganuga Bhakti. But that will have to come gradually. We're a long way from that yet. We're still neophyte. So in our neophyte stage, we follow all the rules and regulations. And even people who are Raganuga Bhakti, they should also try to follow the rules and regulations. Not that they should become irresponsible. Sometimes people try to imitate advanced devotees and they will do things like that. They will think, they will say, oh yes, and because I'm advanced, I'm on Raganuga Bhakta, so I don't need to follow the rules and regulations. I don't need to go to class. I don't need to come and see the deities. I'm already Raganuga Bhakti. I'm already great devotee. And that way they don't bother to do anything. And so, this, of course, this is the, the maya. This is how maya comes into devotional service. You get so many people who are pretending that they have already surpassed all the rules and regulations. So, we do want to encourage people to follow, to follow strictly, to show the example of devotee. An example of the devotee is they will practice carefully according to the principles. It is said, Shruti Smriti Puranadi Panchara Triki Vitim Binam Aikantiki Hurea Bhaktya Utpate Yaiva Kalpate. The devotional service which is not performed according to the Shruti and the Smriti, and the Puranas, and the Pancharatriki, then it is simply a disturbance to society. So we have to be very careful not to disturb the society. We want to act very carefully according to Shastra. And you can see here, Dhruva Maharaj, he got the association of the sages. It was the presence of the sages that they reminded him, they helped him to overcome the illusion of the yakshas and to bring him out of the, the maya, get him free from all the illusions which the yakshas had created. So it's very important association. Somehow you have to associate sadhu, shastra, guru. That kind of association, very important for us. So we say, have to read the books, you have to read Prabhupada's books carefully. You have to study them. 
We see sometimes devotees are not reading. They've been in the movement many years and they never read. They never studied the books. So they're very bad. We want to encourage all the devotees read Prabhupada's books carefully, get to know the philosophy. Just like our morning program, we think some people they come to Mangalati, they don't know Guru Vastikam. We're singing every morning Guru Vastikam. You get people, they want to get initiation, even they want second initiation. They cannot even sing the Guru Vastikam and they have no idea what it means even. I asked them, what is the meaning? Oh, uh, <laughs> They don't know. We're singing every day. They don't know what it means. So Prabhupada said, you don't get any benefit if you don't know what it means. You have to know the meaning as well. So important for us to learn all these things. Training. This is all our this is sadhana bhakti, learning and memorizing, hearing, chanting, all of these things very important for us to come to the higher level of devotion. The more we learn, then the more we become qualified for more. Krishna can give us more. There's always more, there's always more. We can go on just like we can he we hear about, we're hearing about shantaras, the shantaras, that's a stage of neutrality, neutral love of God. Shantaras, we simply appreciate the opulence, but there's no actual service. But then it goes on to dasharas. When one actually takes up service, then the shantaras become dasharas. And that dasharas can go on to takyaras, where you can become friendly with Krishna. And takyaras goes on to vatsalyaras, where one will even want to protect Krishna like a parent. And that vatsalyaras can go on to madhuryaras, conjugal love, where the gopis want to give everything for the pleasure of Krishna. And once you come to Madhurya Ras, then it can go on also. There's many different stages of in Madhurya Ras. We see how the the the, the, the queens of Dwarka, they're also in Madhurya Ras. And the what Krishna's wives in Vaikuntha, they're also in Madhurya Ras. Then you've got the gopis in Vrindavan, they're also Madhurya Ras. So there's Parakya Ras and Swakya Ras. So Parakya Ras means the Madhurya Ras with, without marriage. Swakya Ras is with marriage. But Parakya Ras is even greater than Swakya. So where there's no marriage, then Madhurya Ras, then the mood of love is greater and more intense. So that's the there's a progression there. And even among the different servants of Lord Krishna, the different gopis, there's progression. We see it. it's not that all the gopis are all on the same level, but some gopis are more advanced than others. And you get some gopis who are they are very intimate associates of Srimati Radharani and so on. Like that, so you can see there is progression in the spiritual world. Even as we go on in the spiritual world, there's so many things to progress to. We have to go on and we can go on and taste the nectar more and more as we go on. So this is Krishna consciousness. It's a great challenge for all of us to awaken our love for Krishna. But it's a very scientific process. We just simply have to follow as it's described. Are there any questions? Yes, Maliji. Mike, Mike, Mike. Can't hear. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, at the time of death, if you know the devotee is in unconscious state, coma, only or the person will devotee be able to think of the Lord, you know, it's already in coma. No, if you're in a coma, of course you're not going to be able to think of Krishna. No, no, but still, if you thought of Krishna throughout your life, but still somehow you leave the body in a coma, although you may not be able to think of Krishna, Krishna will think of you. And Krishna will deliver you. So sometimes, you know, people worry that, oh, that guru, you know, he died, he was unconscious, you know, how could he, you know, how could he go back to Godhead if he was unconscious? But Garuda Purana describes that even though you can't think of Krishna, Krishna will think of the devotee. Because the devotee sacrificed his life for the service of Krishna. So Krishna will not forget him at the moment of his death. Thank you, Maharaj. And another question, Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj was very young, isn't it? He could fight with the Yakshas. What age was that, Maharaj? Well, he was young, but he didn't remain young. He grew up. <laughs> yeah. He grew up, he got married, you know. <laughs> he had his family, he ruled the world for many years. And then, before, before the end of his life, he went off to Badarik Ashram and stayed in the Himalayas. And from the Himalayas, he went back to Godhead. Vaikuntha airplane came and took him to the Pope Star. So yeah, he was fighting with the Yakshas. We, uh, we don't know exactly what age he was. Not told, but he was blessed actually that he would be, remain youthful. He wouldn't be affected by old age and disease. So that was the blessing which the Lord had given to him when he was uh, doing his six months there in the forest, doing his austerities, a young child. He was blessed like that, that he wouldn't have to be, he wouldn't be troubled by old age or disease. Thank you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Yes? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, Guru Maharaj, um, if one, a, a devotee is practicing Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti and throughout consistently, but um, they have not gone to Raganuga and they leave their body. Is there a chance to achieve um, Godhead with the consistent Vaidhi Sadhana practice? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Sadhana Bhakha, they can also go back to Godhead. You don't have to be a Raganuga Bhakta to go back to Godhead. Sadhana Bhakta. Sadhana Bhakti is also pure devotion. It can also take you back to Godhead. You don't have to worry about that. There are examples of great devotees who did sadhana bhakti and they went back to God. But you should understand also within our own morning program we have elements of Raganuga Bhakti. And there are things, you know, the different practices which we have, you know. You could be doing Raganuga Bhakti and not even be aware of it, you know by doing things like, you know, we sing Jai Radha Madhava, Kunja Bihari, this is, you know, this is a, all Raganuga Bhakti, serving Krishna. But it's not like, the, oh, this activity is Raganuga Bhakti, that's Sadhana Bhakti. But it, it's, uh, the, the mood. That we're following the people of Vrindavan. We're cultivating the mood of people of Vrindavan and worshipping Krishna. Here you can see Radha and Krishna. So Radha and Krishna worship. That is Vrindavan. That is Raganuga Bhakti. Worshipping 
the, the, the deities and then worshipping the pure devotees, Tosi Devi, all of these things. It, it's all there. Raghunaga Bhaktas, they are also doing these things. People on the platform of spontaneous love of God, they're also chanting Hare Krishna. They're also hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. All of these things are there. It's just that the mood is a little different in Raghunaga Bhakti. A little, the attitude is more that they're in the mood of Vrindavan cultivating the mood of the people of Vrindavan and following the footsteps of great devotees in Vrindavan. You mentioned just now about the Nitya Bada and the Nitya Siddhas. Yeah. So, uh, does they come from the same place or is it the Nitya Siddhas direct from spiritual and the Nitya Bhadas, are they not from the spiritual? The eternal condition? Well, of course, if we're conditioned souls, we're not in the spiritual world, we're here, right? So we have, uh, initially, you could say we were all Nitya Siddhas. We're all pure souls, but we've become conditioned. How we fell down, that's another question. How we got here. But, uh, yes, the Nitya Siddhas, they're eternal residents of the spiritual world. They're et eternally there with Krishna, the spiritual world. But sometimes Nitya Siddhas come here. And sometimes, Nitya Bhadas become Nitya Siddhas. So there is some motion, both up and down. You can say some souls may be leaving, they may be falling into the material world, other souls are going back to the spiritual world. So some souls who have been conditioned, they've come out of the conditioning and they've become liberated, they become perfect and they become Nitya Siddha and they're going back to be with Krishna in the spiritual world to join his pastimes there. Yes, demigods also come here and worship Radha and Krishna. In London, we have the deity Radha Landanishwara, and Prabhupada told us we have to make two Vyasa signs. He said one for Brahma and one for Narada Muni. It says sometimes they will come to attend the RT. Sometimes they want to come and see the deities. It says, so you make two asanas there. One for Brahma and one for, one for Lord Brahma, one for Narada Muni. It says, they will come. And another time, they were having a program in New York. Then uh, it seemed like there were not many people there at the program. And the devotee apologized to Prabhupada and said, Sri sure, sure, Prabhupada, we're sorry, we're not able to get many people to come and attend your program. Prabhupada said, no, you didn't see. Said, didn't you see Narada Muni? They were, they, so many demigods, they all came for the program. So sometimes they will come. Yes. Yeah. They're visible to the eyes of the pure devotees. But sometimes they may also come as ordinary people. We don't know who they are. Just like at the birth of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when Lord Chaitanya appeared as the son of Jagannath Mishra and Sanchi Mata, at that time so many different demigods, they all came. Disguised just like ordinary people, they all came and they brought offerings for the baby. Actually, they were all different demigods coming from all different places, just coming to have darshan of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
Mm -hmm. So the demigods can come. Usually Kali Yuga they won't come, but when pure devotees are there and when the Lord is there, then they're eager. The demigods even want association with the pure devotees. It said the demigods offer their respects to the pure devotees. The ones whose lips are always decorated with prayers to the Supreme Lord are always given respect by great saintly persons and such people are worshipable by the demigods. So the demigods will worship the pure devotees and they will worship, of course, the Supreme Personality of God. Once I saw one miracle, this temple. I used to come early, sitting here. I sit in the veranda hall. I saw one dog running around that temple, don't know how many times. Running around the temple down. Then he left. There yeah, you don't know what kind of soul was in the dog. The dog ran around the temple, huh? Yeah. After one or two times. It's been about a few times. Outside? Uh-huh. Underneath? Underneath. Around the temple. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah. Mm -hmm.